And uh, so we're just going to try something here. Uh, we haven't sang this song in a while, but I can't really preach on faith if I don't do what God tells me to do, can I, brother? See ya. <laughs> The drunk on the street, the rich and their palaces, the poor and unlearned, and men of degree, they all have a soul in need of forgiveness, and it comes by Calvary. And I am so glad God saves old sinners. I'm thrilled and amazed how He sets them free. But the greatest surprise, oh, the greatest surprise in redeeming old sinners is that He would save an old sinner like me. Was I so bad? I needed forgiveness. Was I so wrong? I had to be redeemed. I was not a thief, but I lived in sin's prison. And I was as lost as a sinner could be. And I am so glad God saves old sinners. I'm thrilled and amazed how he sets them free. But the greatest surprise, oh, the greatest surprise in redeeming old sinners is that he would save an old sinner like me. Is that he would save an old sinner like me. I'm grateful today that God's still saving. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, let's turn over to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Is all hearts and minds clear here this morning? Boy, I tell you what, the devil's just really fighting hard. So let's pray. Amen? Uh, let's just pray the Lord just have his way here today and, and just, uh, just allow us to preach this thought. It's a simple thought. Uh, it's just a, a thought that, uh, uh, that we must look at us. I may back up just a little bit to where, we, where our text is and, and just kind of give you just a, a brief side note of something uh, here too. But I, I'm not sure how long this will be. I see some people's eyes rolling, preacher, whenever you say that. Well, we just want to be mindful of the Lord today. We truly do. But Mark chapter 11, start reading in verse 22. Let's all stand. If you're physically able to, I understand uh, some of those, the floors, the way it slopes. If you have back, knee, or, or hip troubles, uh, it's very difficult. And I understand if you're not able to. I, and the Lord understands that as well. But Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 and verse 22. And God's word said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Amen? Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the, in the, into the sea, and thou shalt, thou, thou shalt not doubt in his heart, but shalt believe that those things uh, which he saith shall come to pass. And he, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore... I say unto you, what things, whosoever ye desire, when ye pray, believe ye shall receive them, and ye shall have them. Father, we ask today, Lord, for your blessing, Lord, to be able to expound on this message, and Lord, to be able to, to look at this thought in a way that's, uh, that's, that's pleasing to you and understanding, Lord, we pray. Lord, I have your blessing, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Now we have an understanding of what faith is. Faith is believing that uh, it, it's, 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 it's much more than what we are, much more than what we think we can do. Let's back up just a little bit uh, about verses 13. We're not looking at every verse, verse by verse, but I want to give you just a brief update just a little bit before we come here. It says here uh, there was a, a tree afar off and they were becoming very hungry. 
And it was not yet even the time for figs to be on the trees. And Christ went over to the tree and rebuked the tree. It says, no man eat fruit of here thereafter forever. And this disciples heard him. In verse 17, uh, it, it goes in and they started uh, just doing st- another side note takes place. But in verses 19, it comes again once again. It says, and when even was come, and when they went out into the city. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree that thou cursedest is withered away. Now this fig tree is a picture of Israel. This fig fig tree is a picture of Israel that, now listen, we must bear fruit for Him. Amen? As a church, as a body of believers, we must bear fruit to be able to be prosperous for the Lord. Right? There is no place to sit idle in the work of the Lord. As we look at this, it's a, it, it, he's using this in a great way. Aren't you grateful today that God uses things to show us that He is still in control? As I was sitting there and I said, Lord, I'm not going to sing today. And He said, you're going to sing today. I said, no, I don't want to sing today. And I was, uh, even as I was doing my announcement, I said, I'm not going to sing today. You probably thought I was being a little distracted. I was. I was arguing with God. Shame on me. Like you all don't do that. I said, I hadn't sung it in months. I said, Lord, if that's what you want, we'll sing. I didn't know how the second verse started until I got the second verse. Maybe some singers say, well, I'm not. But I had to trust him because he was in control. We must, the disciples seen that, that Christ is in control. Faith is realizing that what we have in front of us is, un, is out of our control, but it's in his control. Isn't the greatest thing that uh, the most uh, anxiety-filled thing is? And anxiety is just, uh, you know, knowing that we're not in control of something. How many of us like to be in control of something? Just leave your hands down. I figured I'd get a true reading on that. We all like to be in control. We all like to to, to have things. We all, it's just the, uh, the, uh, the, what we are and who we are. It's how we're made up, right? No, you know, I'm going to do this. Somebody said, well, you can't do that. And and I'll show you just how hard it is, but I'll make sure I do it. We was building our house. And I told him, I said, I'm going to be in in our house in February. Tim, you're not going to be able to do that. Tim, you're not going to be in your house in February. I told Brandy, I went home, and I said, last weekend in February, we're moving in. I moved in, but I shouldn't have. It took me 10 years to get the rest of the closets done. And Brandy just, she's shaking her head. I was going to do it, and I was going to have my way, and I paid for my way. But when we allow Christ to be in us and around us, and we allow Him to have an understanding that we aren't in control, we aren't the ones that's supposed to get the gratification. We aren't the ones that's supposed to get the accolades. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified and risen again and us believing that He's able to take care of the problem. We see here that it's taking place. In verse 22, let's jump to our text verse again. And Jesus said unto him, have faith in God. Aren't you grateful today that there is, uh, there is, in, there is encouraging when we trust in the Lord? It's encouraging to know that our problems are bigger than what we have, are, are, are much greater than what we can even think about or comprehend, but we trust in a God that knows all things. Let's look at some things throughout God's Scripture. Let's look here today as we look over in Luke chapter 8 and verses, 20, uh, verses 48, I believe it is. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 48, uh, it tells here just a little bit about a lady uh, that, uh, that, had, uh, that had no hope within him. They had nothing there that could help them. They had nothing there. She had an issue of blood for 12 years, and she just said, if I can just but touch the hem of the garment, I know I'll be taken care of. Boy, there's great joy in having faith in the Lord. Let's look here in verses 48. I I believe that's where it is. It's verse 48. And 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 he said unto her, Daughter, be be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace. How was she touched? It was, it was because she touched the hem of his garment. 
No, she had a faith believing that if I touched the hem of his garment, I'd, she believed that Jesus was able to take care of all of her problems. As we think a little further, we think many, many times again how we as individuals, we think that God doesn't care about our small problems. We look at everybody else around us, and everybody else around us has these uh, huge, enormous issues that's facing them, and we're over here worried about this one. If God, if you care about it, and it's struggling to you, I believe God cares about it. It may not be big to us, or this person over here may have something huge and, and, and it's just overwhelming to them. God cares about all of our trials, all of our problems, all of our difficulties, all of our shortcomings. He cares because He cares for His children. So when the lady said, if I could just touch, the disciples said, Jesus, have you looked around? There's, there's everybody around us, they're pushing, they're, uh, they're up against us. And you said, and somebody touched your garment, look at everybody's touching you. And he says, I felt the virtue go out. There's enjoyment in faith. There's knowing that we have today. We also see that in verses 23 it says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. Now, I'm not sure if you've done much reading on history. I'm not sure if you've done much, a whole lot. Uh, years ago, Brother Harvey got me interested in some books of a retired preacher. Uh, and, I, and I wish I would have looked at those books. I meant to look at those about Wednesday or Thursday to get the name of those books. But it was a, just a good, solid book. And it told the history of, 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 of this area, of the Holston Valley area, all the way up to through Bean Station and all the way up through, uh, uh, through the Cumberland Gap and, and just the as they moved forward. And it started with one family and just kind of progressed and grew as the generations and decades. It was, I don't like to read, and it was a pretty good book. And the greatest difficulties that they had was overcoming the mountains, was traveling over the mountains. They did not have an I-26 or a 25E going over Cumberland Gap. They did not have they didn't even have a toll road going through West Virginia. Praise the Lord. They didn't have all of these. Uh, they had one small path if they were very fortunate. And they didn't have bridges. They didn't have uh, ferries most places. And they had obstacles that was just over, over big. If that's even a word. When we look at our lives... We may think many times that there are mountains that's just too big for us to climb. Uh, there's just too overwhelming for us to, to see or too overwhelming for us to be a part of growing up in the mountains and learning how to drive or being part of East Tennessee and West Virginia and Appalachia area. What do we do when it starts to sprinkle snow? Oh, we go get strawberry pop tarts, bread. Whether you have whether you have cat food, whether you have a cat or not, you get cat food because a neighbor may need it. Why? Because of the obstacles that we face. We also face obstacles in our spiritual life. We also face obstacles that are overwhelming to us. It says here, it says in verses 23, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and to be cast into the, into the sea, thou shalt thou shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things uh, which he shall saith come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, you mean to tell me, preacher, if I go out here and I pray uh, for, a, uh, for, for this new object or this new house or this new car I'm wanting one of those Teslas I don't know why you'd want one there. I'm one boy you thank the Lord now come on let's just get serious a little bit he's going to give us what we need at the time I've used this illustration before in the past my boys will go in into the sporting goods store back to Walmart and they'll they'll look and they say they pull out this big old corn knife or some people call it machete oh, I gotta have one no you don't have to have one of those. They'll go into uh, they'll go they'll go into a tractor supply store. They'll go in the in, in, into the co-op and they say, 
Check out this chainsaw. That's what I want for my birthday. No, you don't need a chainsaw for your birthday. So as parents, we know what our children are mature enough to have, right? The same thing that our Heavenly Father knows what we're mature enough to have. So He's telling us, you may have a need, and the Father sees that need. He's going to grant that to you. Aren't you grateful today that He knows our very needs of our heart? Our need may be a, an emotional need. It may be somebody there that, that all we need is just somebody to put a hand on our back. It may be somebody that just encourages us. It may just be somebody that can talk to us while we're driving somewhere. And no, I've got Bluetooth in my car now, so I don't hold it up to my ear. So it may be somebody that has gone through the trials that we've been going through right now, and they say, this is how you need to do this, and I'm not sure about you, but this is how I overcome this with the Lord's help. Not necessarily telling us what to do, but giving us encouragement by their testimony, right? It may be a financial need. Preacher, we was okay till inflation. I understand. It may be a financial need. It may be a physical need. We have folks in our church that are taking treatments. We have folks in our church that's had surgeries or recovering from surgeries. Sister Jeanette Callahan will have knee surgery, I believe, the, the first of June. That's a physical need for her. See, whatever the need is, he'll supply that. If we're mature enough for that. Does that make sense? Some of you are looking at me, I don't know, preacher. I've been praying for a new car, and, and, and especially one of them nice cars. If, if you have a nice vehicle, praise the Lord. But that may not be what we need at the time. When I moved down here, I had an old 85 Toyota that come out of the mountains of West Virginia, and it was already rested almost in two, and, 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 and had 240, some, almost 300,000 miles on it. I was able to put a new engine in it. I brought it all the way down here, and people looked at me like, you actually drove that across town, let alone all the way to Tennessee. It wasn't the nicest, but God provided until I was able to get something else. See, that's how God's provision is. That's those obstacles being removed. We see over in Matthew chapter 17 and verses 20, many times we see that uh, we think maybe that our prayers aren't getting out. Maybe sometimes we're just not where we need to be. But here we see in Matthew chapter 20, or Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20, and Jesus said unto them, Because of thy unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have the faith, the grain of a mustard seed, Ye shall, ye shall say unto the mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it, shall, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now let's put this kind of in our context just a little bit today. It's been a while maybe since you've seen a tobacco seed, but just imagine that tobacco seed. How small that tobacco seed is. I've seen coffee grounds bigger than a tobacco seed. And a teaspoon would make a whole bed. And then you'd transplant it and you'd put it out in your tobacco patch and you'd sucker and you'd spray, you'd top, you'd side dress, you'd fertilize. Come about Labor Day, you'd have to sharpen your knife, wouldn't you? Boy, I've seen some stalks just pretty tall. That's what we're talking about. It may start out with just something small, but if we nurture it, if we fertilize it with God's Word, if we allow Him to have His way in our hearts and our lives, God will nurture it to the point to where it's productive and it's useful for His purpose. That's what we are, 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 are commanded and taught to do. He commands us to have faith in Him. It, it's, if we receive Jesus Christ, we receive Him because faith in Him. If we, if, as, as, as we sing or as we preach or as you teach, it's not our abilities, but it's our faith in Him that allows us to teach the message, allows us to preach the message, that allows us to witness to someone that we've been praying about for many years. It's Him that allows us to overcome. It is not our abilities or our inabilities, but it's our faith in a God that knows all things. So we see here that we can have enjoyment in faith. 
Sometimes it's scary, isn't it, Brother Howard? Sometimes it's uncertain. That's what faith's all about. All I can see is that big clock back there flashing at me. That's as far as I can see. But my God sees through tomorrow, through next week, through six years from now, 20 years, 50 years from now, my God sees through to that. And He's saying, have faith in me. I'm in control. I'm able to provide. So we see that there's a blessing in faith. We also see that there's obstacles that He's able to remove. Isn't it wonderful today when we pray and we pray and we pray and and somehow in our minds we say somehow God did it. We know how God did it because He's all powerful and all knowing. But then when we see Him work, we're kind of like Peter. Did you see that? Did you see that tree? I remember. It was just yesterday you said that tree would be cursed. It was just yesterday that tree would, would bear no fruit evermore. Did you see that, Jesus? We're the same way. Oh, we pray and we seek His face and we do what the Bible commands us and teaches us to do. We're following after His will. It's hard, it's difficult at times. We follow after Him and we pray, Brother Seal, and we pray and we pray. And then when it happens, we're like, did you see that? But isn't it, isn't it rejoicing? Isn't there some rejoicing with that? Can you imagine the lady that was touched? Can you imagine Jairus' daughter that was healed? Can you imagine all of these? Can you imagine the blind man? Can you imagine the man that was lame from his birth? If somebody just helped me. Can you imagine the man of, that was called Legion? Because there was many demons within him. And can you imagine him clothed, sitting in his right mind? The joy... The joy it is that we trust in Him. We see in verse 24. It says, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever thou desirest when ye pray, believe that ye receive Him, and ye shall receive them. Well, first of all, I believe our desires need to be of God. Amen? First of all, our desires, I believe, need to be of Him and about Him. We need food to survive. Some of us, including me, I'm not pointing anybody's fingers, but my belly, some of us could do without a little more food. Me. Some of us could do without a little more cars. I don't know about you, but I've got four sitting in my driveway. Some of us can do without a little bigger house. We've been blessed, right? But God still provides. But it's amazing when God steps out, He understands our need, He says, yes, that is a need, and He provides greatly. What is your mountain today? What are you faced with today? In mine, sometimes it's a pastoral need. Sometimes it's a family need. Emily, it's hard to believe that Emily will be graduating a week from tomorrow. Somebody ask, oh, preacher, what are you going to think about her leaving? Well, a few months ago, I'd say, oh, I'd be all right. Brother C.L., the closer I get, I'm not sure. Just be honest. I think it was the Cranks and I, we was talking about that a few, and it got me thinking, brother, about, oh, what, this time's coming soon. It's hard to believe that they're already grown up. It may be a family mountain. It may be a financial mountain. Brother Carl Gentry, one of the sweetest men in our community, amen? Brother Carl Gentry's going through radiation. I'm sure that's a mountain for Brother Carl Gentry. Are you seeing? What is your mountain today? Your mountain may be a loved one that is lost without Jesus Christ in their heart. And that may be your mountain. It should be. Have faith in God. Have faith. Your mountain may be a personal experience that you just can't get out of your way. Have faith. We're studying about Joseph. Oh, Joseph could have used his experience to be bitter. Oh, Joseph could have used his experience to say, I'm not going to help my brothers. Let them over there die in the homeland. But Joseph brought them out. 
Joseph provided for them. Joseph's dream come true. And Joseph's faith in a holy God helped his family. When he was put in the pit and sold into slavery, he was unsure of what was taking place. But the end results, God got the glory for it. God God didn't get glory through the selling of him, through the mistreating of him. But God used something terrible for something good. That may be your mountain today. What are you tried with? Father, we thank you. Lord, we love you for what you do. And Lord, we thank you for all your many blessings. Lord, we ask today, Lord, you give strength. And Lord, we ask today, Lord, you give guidance through this, through this altar service. And, and Lord, just allow this message, Lord, to encourage, to uplift, and to open eyes. Lord, that we must have faith in a God that loves us. Lord, we must put our faith in Jesus Christ if we want to see heaven. We must have faith if we're going to teach a class and, 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 and God be let God be blessed and, 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 and His Word be proclaimed. We must have faith if we're going to work a work a job in, a, in the public. We must have faith if we're going to raise children or be, have a family. We must have faith if we're going to walk as a Christian. We walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, we ask today, Lord, for your guidance, Lord, through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. As we all stand today, do you have a mountain this morning? Do you have a mountain that just seems like it's overwhelming? Let's bring it to the altar today. Let's bring it. Sometimes those mountains are huge. Sometimes those mountains are overwhelming and they just wear us out. Cast your cares upon Jesus for He cares for you. If we need to come, let's come. Let's come.